How can I make this game stand out? That was a question I thought about a lot at the beginning of this year. I had taken a break from working on Radiant Bricks in order to focus on other parts of life, and I spent a lot of time thinking about the state of the game. I thought the idea was solid, but my current project didn't stand out. And after a lot of thought, I switched the project to 3D. However, this ended up pushing the project into development hell. Not only have I switched back to 2D, I have switched to a different game toolkit entirely, one that most of you haven't even heard of. Let's talk about the switch from 2D to 3D and what went wrong from there. My initial thought was that there aren't a ton of 3D Brick Breaker games. I figured this would be a great opportunity to learn 3D modeling. This started off pretty well. I could make simple 3D models, and with even the basic Blender tools, I could do things like insets and make them look unique. I used part of the gamedev.tv game jam to learn quite a bit about how 3D worked in Godot. I didn't finish the jam, but I did learn a lot. I started the 3D prototype and got the basics working, even to the point where I could switch colors but I still had three big hurdles to overcome to make sure the project could continue. The first one was a level editor. One thing I want Radiant Bricks to have is a way for people to create their own levels. Ideally, I wanna let players share their levels. Additionally, this would help me create the base levels for the game. I worked on this for quite some time. I thought about this for quite a while. I got a simple prototype working, but when it came to creating an offset or having it so multiple bricks couldn't be placed in the same area, I could never get this working like I wanted. Second, I wanted to create a power-up system. What is a Brick Breaker game without power-ups? The challenge for this was to think through the structure. I needed something encapsulated, but it had to be able to affect basically the entire rest of the game. I ultimately did get something together and it generally worked, but it felt like I had to create a lot to get a single power-up added, and it felt like it was gonna get unwieldy fast as I added different types of power-ups and needed to affect the game in different ways. Third, and most importantly, I had to make the game feel good. Without that, the rest wouldn't matter. I thought since I was sticking to a 2D plane, it wouldn't make the code that much more complex. For the most part, I was right until I started to get really deep into certain aspects. There were a few things where sometimes they just didn't work right. I couldn't really find a pattern as to why. I'm positive this was a skill issue, but it made it very difficult to track down issues. There were other areas I could never quite get working the way I wanted. I could never get the game to feel right. I'd mess with friction, I'd mess with speed, I'd mess with all kinds of things, but it never felt good. The other challenge that started coming up more and more was making the game look good. Admittedly, this wasn't a big focus early on. As it's a prototype, I don't like to try to do visuals that much in a prototype. While I could design more interesting shapes in 3D, things like shaders, material, and lighting were all more complex in 3D. I played with Godot's environment settings for a while, but again, I couldn't figure out what was missing. I was also seeing issues that I had never heard about in Godot. One example is when trying to activate the laser power-up, which at that time was only spawning an empty scene, the FPS would drop significantly. Again, I suspect a skill issue. This made it very difficult to try to work on the game. I felt it was pointless to build out more when I knew the big problems I had to solve. It didn't make sense to sink more time to the project creating other features when I knew I had these issues. This is the point, of course, that I realized the game was in development hell, and that led to the biggest problem I had with the project overall. You see, I talked a lot about why game dev and my why I started game dev video. One of the goals with Radiant Bricks was to go through a full project, learn a lot, and put out a small scope game that people could enjoy. I don't expect to make a profit. I'll be thrilled if I make enough to get the Steam posting feedback. If I don't, that's fine too. I consider any feedback I get to be very valuable. The goal was never to spend this long on the project. If I didn't already have the capsule art and I didn't like the idea for the game as much as I do, I would have probably switched gears and thought of a new game. But I really like the idea for a game and it's one I want to play. I took a hard look at Radiant Bricks. I considered, do I say screw it and go back to 2D? Do I put this on the back burner and focus on something else? Ultimately, another programming language and a dragon would intervene. By the way, do you like Brick Breakers? If so, consider wishlisting Radiant Bricks on Steam or checking out the demo on Itch. This is very early, but any feedback you provide is very helpful as the project progresses. 
So while I thought about my game, I wanted to put time into getting better at programming. I know my code skill still has a long way to go, so I wanted to work on improving that. I had an idea for a web app to potentially help out the local game dev group and started to explore some web frameworks. I was looking at Laravel and Ruby on Rails. Why not React? Because I want to enjoy programming. Rails was making a lot of sense. I don't know that I will build the app in Rails, but it was a nice introduction to Ruby. Then Game From Scratch posted this video. It was about a game toolkit called Dragon Ruby being free for the Ludendare weekend. Ruby and Game Dev. That's an interesting combo and I can check it out for free. What the heck, I may as well download it. This was my thought process. I proceeded to play with DR for an hour or so that weekend, but ultimately thought, well, maybe next game or a game jam, I'll look at it more. I resumed my focus on the web app. I eventually found a few conference talks about Rails and even some on Dragon Ruby. If you've never heard DHH talk about Ruby, I would encourage you to listen to the Primogen and TJ Devs podcast with DHH. The joy he has talking about Ruby can be infectious. I also think Amir, the owner of Dragon Ruby LLC, does a good job talking about why someone should consider using Dragon Ruby and some of the advantages it has. I'll link to the podcast episode and a few of Amir's talks below. Dragon Ruby, or DR, hosts the 22nd Game Jam, and it started on November 7th. My plan was to use that to dive into learning DR. But a few weeks before that, I ended up starting to prototype Radiant Bricks and Dragon Ruby. I had a few tasks in mind that I wanted to better understand how I would accomplish them in DR. How would I get the physics working? How would I build out levels? How would I get power-ups to work? What about lighting? The thing about Dragon Ruby is there's no UI, just you and your text editor. I consider these functionalities essential for Radiant Bricks and decided to use them as a bit of a test for DR. Could I even figure out how to make all of this work? One feature of Dragon Ruby that I think is undersold is that it comes with around 150 sample projects that run just like a game. They start off simple and get more complex, even including base templates for specific genres. One of those templates was Pong. I looked at it and saw how simple the physics could be. The code was even MIT licensed, so I started to hack on it. Since I was still so new to Ruby and Dragon Ruby, my progress was not quick, but I changed the physics to be more Arkanoid-like. I set the paddles and ball up to change colors. I got the ball to collide with the right color bricks. The more comfortable I got, the quicker this went. One area of Ruby that I struggled with was symbols. I just couldn't even grasp what they were. After using DR a bit, these were a huge help to simplifying the game. If your language supports symbols, I encourage you to work on understanding them as they have been extremely helpful with something like Radiant Bricks. I wanted to take one of the more tricky tasks on next, the power-up system. I decided I need a class for that. I checked in with the Dragon Ruby Discord after the first failed attempt and got some solid tips about how to do this. By the way, if you decide to try out Dragon Ruby, definitely join the Discord. They are a helpful bunch. I got the power-up system working. I implemented the first power-up completely and I have a way to randomly pick one. I still have to add more, of course, but the power-up system is much more straightforward in Dragon Ruby due to how flexible the toolkit is. Next, I wanted to build the level editor. You have to understand, I have had a vision for this level editor since I started working on Radiant Bricks. I could never get this working the way I wanted to in Godot. I found a level editor sample to check out and started work. The sample was a lot more complex than I needed as it had camera space. Again, due to my inexperience with Ruby and Dragon Ruby, it took a bit longer than it should, but it works. I can add bricks. I can switch colors. I can add a vertical and or horizontal offset. And even with that offset, I can make sure bricks don't overlap. I still need to add other bricks options like unbreakable, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Since then, I've been working on adding a basic menu. So all that to say, after re-prototyping Radiant Bricks, what was at first a question is now an answer. I'm switching Radiant Bricks' development over to Dragon Ruby. Ruby is awesome, Dragon Ruby is lean, it's great for prototyping, and you can iterate to more complex systems when necessary. You can start with your game entirely in one file and expand or split out as needed. And Dragon Ruby is fast. The Ruby code, from my understanding, compiles to C, so you still get great performance with the Dragon Ruby runtime. The hot reload feature is also pretty cool. There's still a ways to go, an art style to finalize, systems to add, but overall, I'm optimistic that this will put me on the timeline I expected when it comes to completing Radiant Bricks. 
If you're interested in making 2D games and you want to try something a bit different, consider checking out Dragon Ruby. By the way, none of this is sponsored. They don't know I'm saying this, but I just think that Dragon Ruby is a very cool toolkit and think you should check it out if that's something you want to do. Have you ever had a project in development hell? How did you escape? That's it for this one. Hopefully we won't be too long between uploads next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time.